On the 70th anniversary, the trustees were quite concerned that there's a few getting fewer. We could not explain personally how and why the Battle of Britain. So we looked ahead to decide that we really needed a new visitor centre so when people came to see this marvellous memorial, they could actually know why it was there. And so we decided to design a new visitor centre to meet that need. In designing the visitor centre, we said, how should it be? Um, we were very worried because on the Saxon coast we might have planning permission problems, but luckily Dover District Plans were very realistic. And then we thought, well, if we're going to build, say, a million pounds building, we really need to make the most of the site. And of course, as you will see, it is the view that is important. So that's why we decided to build a visitor centre and an experience to tell the story of the Battle of Britain on the, on the Bund overlooking the memorial. Um, however, what sort of building would it be? We needed an iconic building and we eventually came up with the Spitfire Wing. Well, when we were first approached by the Trust um, to come up with the ideas for the new visitor centre, we, we came up with three or four different options. Um, one of which was a, a Spitfire wing shaped building that was partially sunken into the ground um, primarily to reduce its overall mass and visual impact um, and that was going to be located down to one side on the site behind the replica aircraft so less centrally on the site. Initially we, we, we almost added the single wing idea as a bit of a, a, a bit of fun and we didn't really think it would, uh, would go beyond that but in fact at the next trustees meeting um, they said they, they really liked that idea um, of the, or certainly of the Spitfire wing shaped building but they weren't so keen on the fact that it was partially sunken into the ground because they felt it looked like a, a crashed aircraft which is not ideal um, and also it would be expensive to build. And they also decided that rather than just having one wing, um, it would be nice to actually have both the wings and make it look like a complete aircraft um, and possibly incorporate a, a central cockpit section which could maybe be used as a cafe or something like that. It, it was also decided then that rather than tucking the building away down on one corner of the site where it's not so visible, it would be nice to actually make it more central. Um, and overlooking the actual memorial itself, um, but without uh, actually being too dominant and detracting from the memorial. So that's what we did, and we ended up putting it centre stage on the site. Um, and the under, other benefit of that is it has the most marvellous views out across the channel. As you can see, the design is stunning, and that was Nick's work. An amazing um, emphasis he put into it to make the Spitfire wing almost replicate the original Spitfire wing and our builders found it quite difficult. In 2013, uh, we decided to move the first turfs to build the wing. And Wing Commander Bob Foster, who was one of the few, um, was on hand with a digger to actually take out the first sods. And he said, sitting in this digger, bouncing up and down, he said, it's far easier to fly a hurricane. Um, in total, the, the construction period was, was just over 18 months. On plan, it's exactly the same shape as the, the wings of a Spitfire. Um, and the pitch of the roof actually replicates what's known as the dihedral angle of the Spitfire wing. So it's the, the uplift angle of the actual wings is exactly the same as the, um, the roof pitch on the building. Um, Fantastic looking shape, absolutely beautiful, um, but not the easiest of shapes to build. And um, there's around 90 tonnes of steel in, or steel work in the steel frame of the building. Steel fabricators uh, had quite a challenge on their hands making some of the, the elliptical shapes that were required for the steel work. Um, and there's also, um, well, the whole building is piled and some of the piles are up to 20 metres deep because we came across sinkholes in the ground and uh, several other problems so um, yeah it was quite a challenge um, the, the shuttering for the actual slab again is such an unusual shape uh, there's some really skilled carpenters doing that quite a challenging building to build um, but they they certainly rose to that challenge and, and did a fantastic job but 
The other interesting things we found, um, the, this site used to be a, a gun battery during the Second World War, a coastal gun battery site, and we came across one of the original engine houses that would, would have generated electricity for the uh, gun battery. So just a couple of other factors or facts of, of the design which are quite interesting. The, the central atrium, um, there's a, a, a circular opening in the first floor and then directly above it another circular opening in the roof. And the idea of that was partly to, to make the interior of the building nice and bright and light, but also my thoughts with that were um, that you could actually see the sky and really look up and that, that was the battleground above you. So um, it's obviously uh, an important part of, of the Battle of Britain. Um, and there's some more sort of subtle touches in, in some of the finishes like there's a, the, in the floor tiling on the ground floor, there's actually an RAF roundel in the floor tiling, um, which is all cut into it. Uh, it was some very clever laser cutting that was done by the uh, tile suppliers. It's not so obvious when you look at it when you're inside. So once the actual building was complete, the, the fit out of the uh, scramble experience um, was undertaken, or it's designed by um, a company called Creative Good. Um, and it was installed by a, a, a team of companies called, one of them called Elbow, the other one was Cisco and the others were Workhouse and they um, installed all the audio-visual audio um, uh, wizardry that you see inside the Scramble experience. Um, and they also, uh, or we commissioned, uh, the, the special film to be made which is screened um, along the full length of one of the walls um, and just a very evocative and moving film. The reception area, um, the central cockpit for a better word for it, is, has uh, natural light coming from, from above which serves the two floors. The starboard wing houses the Geoffrey Page Centre which is home to our small but very exclusive uh, souvenir shop and also what we call our education area, which we can close off and we can use that for schools visiting. We also do our uh, spring and autumn talks in there. And we also hire that for, for corporate events as well. Yeah. So the port wing, uh, which houses the Scramble Experience, which is a multimedia extravaganza, touchscreen technology, tells our visitors the story of the battle. Uh, and there are video clips now which probably, we're probably the only place where you will see some of the few telling you about their, their experiences or some of the th things that they saw during the battle itself. We have a five minute film uh, and we normally run that every 25 minutes. We can alter that depending on, on, the, on the day. And it's a really five minute punchy film giving you just a feel of what those young men went through in 1940. Um, and some people can find it quite emotional. In fact, I recall when we first opened in 2015, um, Geoffrey Wellham, known as Boy Wellham, uh, saw that film four times that day, and every time he saw it, it brought a tear to his eye. And he's, he even said himself, that's the closest that I've seen something to what happened in 1940. The wing was opened in March 2015, and we we're delighted that Her Late Majesty the Queen Elizabeth and the Duke of Edinburgh were on hand to open it. And sadly for us, it was a horrible day. You could hardly see in front of your face. But Her Majesty, being the, the trooper she was, although she, she knew some crowds which she couldn't see below the wing, she went onto the balcony and gave them a wave, which they all clapped and admired about it. But she really made our day in opening the wing. Of course, every aeroplane has a cockpit. And in Nick's design, of course, we have the cockpit cafe, which sits on top of the wing and makes a beautiful centerpiece for the wing with all the views and a delightful place to have a coffee and something to eat and admire the views and then ponder for a while on what the few did to make this nation free. We like to think that the, the wings are striking looking building um, and generally well received by the public um, and the trust is certainly very proud of it um, and we think it's a, a, a fitting tribute to the few.